I'm Sasha Druskin from the Brady Urological Institute at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. I'm going to be discussing a study undertaken by our group on the use of prostate health index density to detect clinically significant prostate cancer in the biopsy setting. This study was recently published in BJUI. A bit of background. When we measure total PSA in the blood, we are measuring the sum total of multiple degradation products of the 261 amino acid pre-pro PSA. These products include mature active PSA, which rapidly binds to other proteins in the circulation, and multiple truncated PSA variants that together are measured as free PSA. Total PSA is the sum of bound and free PSA. The prostate health index, or phi, is a composite marker that combines, using the simple equation, total PSA, free PSA, and one of the truncated variants, minus two pro PSA. We know that phi outperforms both PSA and percent free PSA for the detection of low risk and higher prostate cancer. Here is data from Dr. Loeb and colleagues. Additionally, we know that PSA density outperforms PSA for the detection of prostate cancer. So given the performance of phi and PSA density over PSA, we wanted to know how does phi density perform? We devised a retrospective study of 118 patients with elevated PSA and a negative DRE who all had phi measured prior to biopsy. Based on their biopsy result, each patient was categorized as having significant disease, defined as NCC and low risk or higher disease, or non-significant disease, defined as very low risk disease or a negative biopsy. Of the 118 patients, 47 had significant cancer on biopsy. Interestingly, PSA was similar between the groups. Phi, PSA density, and phi density were higher in the patients with clinically significant disease, and percent free PSA was higher in those with a non-significant biopsy. This graph shows the distribution of phi density and biopsy grade group. Every dot represents a patient. Black dots are non-significant biopsy pathologies, and red dots are significant. The green line represents the 75th percentile of phi density in our cohort. That was 1.21 and the blue line represents the 25th percentile of phi density in our cohort, 0.43. As you can see, only one person with a phi density less than 0.43 had clinically significant prostate cancer, and this was still NCCN low-risk disease. Using that cutoff had a sensitivity of 98% and a specificity of 38% for the diagnosis of significant cancer. Looking at that data a little differently, here we show the lower, middle two, and upper quartiles of phi density in our cohort. Red is significant and black is not significant. As you can see, the rates of significant biopsies are vastly different between the groups, with higher rates in the patients with higher phi density. On univariable logistic regression, all of the indices, except for PSA, were found to be predictors of significant cancer. On univariable rock analysis, Phi density performed the best of the markers, with an AUC of 0.84. This compared to 0.76 for phi, 0.75 for percent free PSA, 0.7 for PSA density, and 0.52 for PSA. Of the 118 men, 74 were having a biopsy for the first time. We repeated the univariable logistic regression in that subgroup and found phi density to be superior to the other markers in that subgroup as well with an AUC of 0.82. The study is limited by sample size, which is primarily due to the fact that phi was only recently made available for routine clinical use at our institution. Additionally, we only include patients who were biopsied because of concerning PSA and or PSA derivatives, so this is going to be a highly selected population. And finally, the calculation of phi density requires prostate volume, which is usually calculated at the time of biopsy using transrectal ultrasound. However, with the emerging role of MRI in prostate cancer, prostate volume is going to be easily accessible for many patients. In conclusion, for patients undergoing biopsy in the setting of elevated PSA, phi density outperforms phi, PSA density, and percent free PSA for the diagnosis of clinically significant prostate cancer. Using a potential phi density cutoff of 0.43, 38% of biopsies could be avoided at a cost of missing only 2% of clinically significant cancers. I'd like to thank my many collaborators. Thanks for watching.